the many people affected by the devastating earthquake are Nepal's Gurkhas. Now an appeal has been launched and Karen England, the Director of Communications at the Gurkha Welfare Trust, joins us now in the studio. Karen, thanks for um, coming in. Just how uh, badly devastated has the Gurkha homeland been by this disaster? It, it is really devastating, um, particularly three areas, the um, districts of Gurkha, Lamjung and Bagmati, which is the Kathmandu area. Um, we are getting reports of whole villages destroyed um, and our staff are starting to trek out to the remote hillside villages, which is actually where the Gurkha veterans that we care for um, live. Um, to try and assess the impact on them, their villages and, uh, and our work. And you've uh, launched an appeal. Um, just what kind of a response are you hoping to get from that appeal? Yes, we've launched an earthquake response fund. Um, our charity, the Gurkha Welfare Trust, is one of the largest in um, Nepal and we care for, um, responsible for, um, over 6,600 elderly Gurkhas. We've built schools, we put clean water into 1,400 villages. We um, and the people we care for are hugely impacted by this. Um, so we've launched um, an earthquake response fund um, to raise funds for the work that we need to do with immediate effect and in the weeks, months and possibly years to come to, re you know, to repair the homes of our very elderly Gurkhas, to repair the schools and to reinstate clean water and sanitation into the hillside villages. Because, as you say, it's, um, it's not just the short term, isn't it? I mean, 4,000 people have died. That number's going to rise, but it's more communications, roads. A lot of these elderly veteran Gurkhas are quite cut off. Um, so it's those kind of things that you need this money for. Um, I mean, for people who know Nepal, the hillside villages are incredibly remote and hard to access. Lots of the roads are damaged up to them. Some of our um, veterans live two days trek anyway from the nearest road, so it's going to take us weeks to assess their well-being. We're getting reports, you know, every half an hour on cases of, of entire homes collapsing. Our elderly girls, you know, let's, let's be clear about this. Over 3,000 of them are over 80. These are frail elderly men and their widows who fought for us um, in every conflict. They are now living um, in temporary accommodation. They're being put up um, by friends and family. Um, there is an urgent need for the trust to go into their villages, repair their homes, make sure they're safe. We've got some in um, hospital. We, are doc we have seven doctors in Nepal. We are deploying them all to the most affected areas. Our, all our welfare staff we're deploying to the key areas because it's going to take it is going to take us weeks to reach out and find out how they all are. We're very concerned about them. Uh, these weren't veteran Gurkhas, but there were um, dozens of Gurkhas climbing Mount Everest when the earthquake struck, trying to reach the summit. And I think you know some of them, some of them personally. Just how um, worried were you for them? It appears that they're all okay, bar one maybe with slight injuries. But when you heard that news, just how worried were you for them? Yeah, we were, we were very worried. Although relatively quickly, we did hear that there was only one minor injury. I don't know if your listeners know, it's actually the 200th anniversary of Gurkha service to the British in the British Army the day before the earthquake struck was the 200th anniversary and this team of Gurkhas were summiting Everest for the first time ever um, but we did hear um, that most of them had reached Camp 1 and were safe um, there was one ma minor injury a gash to the head um, they have all been um, helicoptered back down to base camp and are uh, a part of the evacuation program. They're helping. They're, I mean, these are trained Gurkhas and their officers um, and are an invaluable resource, I'm sure, at a time of devastation on Everest. Absolutely. You mentioned how um, the Gurkhas fought for us in the past and obviously they're known as being very re resourceful. You've got the engineers going out there um, yeah. to help with the, um, the search and rescue effort. Um, and I guess the importance for that is the they know the language, they know the lie of the land. And at times like this, that's really, really crucial, isn't it? Because you can 
bring in foreign aid and foreign rescue workers, but it's really the people who, who, know, who know where they are, who know the sort of lie of the land and have the language and have that inside knowledge, which is really, really crucial at this time. Absolutely, and that's what our staff are doing. We've got three, around about 340 staff in Nepal, but, you know, this is their homeland. Every Gurkha that serves in the British Army, they have family in Nepal, lots of family. They will be desperate to go back and help. So I know that the um, Queen's Gurkha engineers went out last night from Bryce Norton. I understand that um, a larger group of the Gurkha rifles are also going out. Um, they are the most skilled and talented soldiers um, and will be an invaluable resource. And they'll want to be there. They'll want to be helping their fellow countrymen. And in the long term, just how many years do you think it'll take to rebuild these villages where the Gurkhas who you represent live? I mean, that's a hard thing to assess. Um, it'll take us weeks to reach out to all the water projects, all the villages, um, months, if not two or three years, to re repair any water projects, which is why we are launching our emergency response fund, um, asking people, if I may, if I give our website, which is www.gwt.org. Uk. Um, we will be there in Nepal for years. Well, we're, we are, we've been there since 1969. We'll be there for another 50 years helping this wonderful country and these amazing people who continue to serve us with great distinction. Um, and we just hope your listeners will respond to that. Well, best of luck with the uh, fund. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you.